Why should we meditate? Why is this so important? Well, I've already mentioned the fact that meditation is the best way to avoid the disconnect. The law of God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. Psalm 37, verse 31. If the law of God is in your heart, your feet don't slip. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Not in my head, but in my heart. The greatest distance of the world, I believe, is the 18 inches from our head to our hearts. The Pharisees knew all the facts about Scripture. They were experts in doctrine. Their study of the Old Testament didn't change their lives at all. They still oppressed the poor. They defrauded the widows. They pursued doubtful business practices. Why? There was no heart application. Ezekiel 33, 31 says, My people come to you as they usually do. They sit before you to listen to your words, but they do not put them into practice. With their mouths they express devotion, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. But what meditation does for you is it is a plow that breaks up the fallow ground. If your heart is getting cold and hard, the way to break that up, the plow that goes through it will be meditation. Meditation will also enable you to rebuild your thought structures. Your mind has been programmed in a lot of different ways, in some ways totally contrary to God. And Bible study alone won't do it. It's the first step, and we'll talk about that. But it's, you need those thought structures rebuilt, transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. And meditation will do that. Meditation is the best way to apply God's truth. It's the bridge between being a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. James says, don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. And as a pastor, many times, uh, I've preached and people leave, say, I enjoyed that sermon, pastor. That was, that was great. That was good. And sometimes I've said to them, I'm glad you enjoyed it. What are you going to do about it? It's the application again. Well, again, meditation, you take a sermon, you take a Bible study, and you begin to really ponder that. What are the implications for me? What does that really mean? You take a portion of that, maybe a verse that spoke to you in the sermon, and you begin to meditate on it. According to the Word of God, there are three specific results that we can experience by meditating. What is spiritual success? The only thing that the Bible really promises success for is meditation. He promised it to Joshua in chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. He promises it in Psalm 1. So spiritual success, you want to be a success spiritually? He says meditate on the Word of God. Another result is spiritual strength. You want to be strong spiritually? Meditation on the Word of God. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he meditates day and night, and he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water to bring forth his fruit in his season. Strength, stability, comes from meditating on the Word of God. The other result is spiritual satisfaction. Psalm 119, and I would encourage you to go through it and highlight in your Bibles every time the word delight is mentioned. Uh, several times uh, in that Psalm. But delight is always connected with meditation of the Word of God. You want to experience delight, happiness, joy, meditate on the Word of God. Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Jeremiah says, I found your word and I ate it. That's meditation. And it became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So those are three specific results. Now what should you meditate on? Obviously, the word of God. Taking scripture and meditating on it. 
The psalmist says, I meditate on your precepts. But also, the psalmist meditated on the works of God. I will meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. The works of God in creation, the works of God in history, the works of God in your personal experience. He said, I, I'm going to meditate on all the works of your hands. Meditate on the wonders of God. The psalmist says, I will meditate on your wonders, the awesomeness of God, the wonderful things that he has done, the incredible power and might that he has. And then we're to meditate on the who of God. Psalm 63, verse 6. I think of you, I think of you, God, through all the watches of night. Sometime during night, if I can't sleep, I try to think of God's majesty, God's greatness, God's faithfulness, God's justice, God's holiness, God's kindness. Think about his attributes. That's meditation. Just ponder those. So you can meditate on the Word of God primarily, but meditate also on the works of God, the wonders of God, and the who of God, all legitimate areas. Now let's get to the practical. How do you actually meditate? Let me give you step by step a way that I and many others have found to be very helpful. First, you need to identify an area of your life that you're particularly struggling in. It can be one that we talked about throughout these lectures, but identify a problem in your life or an issue in your life right now that you want some answers to. Select a relevant scripture that speaks specifically to that. We have a list, for example, if you're struggling with lust, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 8, great place to meditate. Temptation in general, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7. Impatience, Isaiah 64, verse 4. Jealousy, Galatians 5, 19 and 20. Discouragement, Psalm 42, 11. Gossip, Psalm 19, 14. Worry, we've talked about Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Find an area that just is bothering you, you're struggling in, and identify that. Ask God to bring it to your mind. Then find that scripture and begin the next step. Obviously, you got to memorize it. So put it, I like three by five cards. Put it on a card. I've got file boxes full of them. Put it on a card. Put it in your pocket, in your purse, in your Bible. Take it with you and begin to memorize it. Take it phrase by phrase and you start to memorize that. Some people have never memorized scripture. They say, I don't know how to memorize. Yes, you do. You can do it, but you need to exercise that muscle. But start memorizing scripture. And then after you, as you're memorizing it, pray. Pray for illumination. God, open the eyes of my heart that I might understand your truth. Give me insight into that scripture. I need your illumination. I don't understand this part. What does it mean? And you begin to pray and memorize together and asking specifically, open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of your law. Give me insight into your word. That's prayed often in the Bible. Paul prayed it, uh, the psalmist prayed it. So now you've identified a problem, you've selected the scripture, you've memorized it, you're praying over it. And as you're praying over it now, you've got to take it deeper. So you start to analyze it. And the way you analyze scripture, it's not too complicated, but what I find to be very helpful is to bombard that scripture with questions. Here's some questions I find from, is there a promise to claim here? If there is, I want to claim it. Is there a command to obey? that I'm not obeying or I'm not aware of? Is there a sin specifically mentioned here that I need to avoid? Is there an example to follow? Is there a prayer that I need to repeat? Is there a condition that I need to meet that I haven't met? 
Is there an error that I need to take note of? Is there a challenge to face? Is there a truth about God, Christ, or the Holy Spirit in this verse? Is there a habit I ought to begin? You, you develop your own questions, but just bombard the text with questions. It helps you understand it. Then you want to also uh, define key words and phrases. I don't know what this word means. In the English Bible, maybe propitiation. It's not a word we use. Well, define that. Try to understand what that word means. Get a dictionary, get a Bible dictionary. Somehow define that word. Then you want to personalize it. Use personal pronouns as you go through it. And just uh, put your own name in there and use those personal pronouns, I, me, my, and make it as personal as you possibly can for yourself. And then another thing is visualizing this becoming true in your life. If this would become true in my life, what would my life be like? And so you take that and you just keep working with it, working with it, working with it until you sense what the psalmist did. While I was meditating, the fire burned. That excitement, that joy, that understanding, that opening to the eyes of your heart, and that becomes yours. And what it does, it strengthens your heart. And it keeps you from that disconnect that we've talked about, of ever learning and never coming to a knowledge of the truth. There are people that I know, been in my church and are in your churches, that go to three or four Bible studies a week. They hear your sermons, they go to Sunday school, go to night service and a Bible study during the week. And they're ever learning but very little transformation in their life. It's very possible to have that head full of scripture, heart full of sin, because you don't process it and don't take it deeply into your heart. So meditation is an absolute key. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Now, to strengthen your heart, let me review and give you suggestions for your further study. Asking yourself again, are there any inner conflicts in my life that indicate strengthening of my heart has not been a top priority. In which of these areas that Jesus specifically warns us to guard against am I most vulnerable? I need to pay, need to pay the most attention to. How can I better guard my heart against that vulnerability? And then select one of the prayers of the heart that will be most meaningful to you right now and memorize it and start praying it. And then Ask yourself, what specific scripture will I take and begin to meditate on? Because it's an area of my life that I have struggles with, problems with, and I want to offset it by the Word of God working in me to push that out of my heart.